Welcome back. Email validation can help you stop people from trying to sign up with fake email addresses as well as just help users during the sign up process. Let's say that the user enters their email address incorrectly. Maybe there's no at sign. Well, you can let them know like, hey, there was a syntax error. Please check your email address and re-enter. Uh, you could also say, hey, we don't accept disposable email addresses or this is not reachable. Uh, or maybe, maybe their inbox is full and you could let them know, please uh, create some room in your inbox so that way we can send you this verification email. Or you could let them know like, hey, better check. It looks like that email has been disabled. Could we please have a different one? So, anyway, let's go ahead and get to our code. We will be using the GitHub slash aftership slash email verifier package. So if you don't have that one already, go ahead and you see go git command. See, we already have it. Uh, to get rid of the slash, we're just going to use email verifier. As you can see, now we're accessing it down here. Let's go ahead and run this. All right. So if the user makes a mistake, we want to let them know right away. Let's say they have a syntax error. An email address has to have the at symbol. So if we don't have that, I'm going to say, hey, email address syntax is invalid. You could say, hey, we don't have that little at symbol. Let's say, for instance, we do not accept uh, disposable email addresses. So we could, or disposable email address that we've created here, if we hit submit, sorry, we do not accept disposable email addresses. And let's say that uh, the user types in an email address, but they get the domain wrong. So if it's, you know, a simple mistake that, you know, there is no Gmail to uh, mail service. So, you know, this is obviously Gmail. So if we hit submit, email address is not reachable. I'm looking for gmail.com instead. But if we do have something that is at an actual uh, email address, well, yeah, we can go ahead and register that user. So looking at our code inside our email verifier package, we're going to run our new verifier function, which is just going to return our verifier that we're going to use to verify our email addresses. If we take a look at that, um, it is just a struct with unexported fields, but it has many different methods that we can use. That's going to, we can check many different things. Uh, the one in particular we're going to be using is the verify method, which is going to check for several different things. So looking at the verifier function, it's going to return a result. And the result, and have a whole bunch of information here. Of course, the email of which we were searching for, whether it was reachable, uh, if we had any syntax errors, um, we can send a response, you know, simple mail transfer protocol and see if it, uh, what the response looked at uh, looked like. Uh, for instance, the response, let us know if the host exists, if the inbox was full, if it was deliverable, or maybe this email address, you know, was this disabled? Um, so GR avatar, uh, globally recognized avatar. I'm just going to say gravatar. Uh, let me know how you actually say that. Um, if they have one of those, we can search for that. Uh, this one's disabled by default, just a heads up. Um, we can, we can give a suggestion, say if we get a domain that's incorrect and uh, we know what it probably is, we can give that suggestion. Uh, let us know if it's a disposable email address. Uh, if we have a role account, maybe if it's say, if it's at support or something, it could be going to several different people, usually with businesses. And it, does it have MX records set up? Is the DNS set up properly uh, to receive emails? Let's go back to our code. So we have just a little bit of boilerplate code here. So again, we're going to run gen default to return our engine, which is going to be taking care of our routes. We have uh, two routes. They're both at slash verify, but one of them is for get requests and one is for post. So for get requests at that path, it's verify email get handlers. The handler is going to handle that. And then at for post, it's verify email post handler that's going to handle that. So uh, the ver email ver verification email get handler is just going to use the HTML method, pass in status code 500. And we're going to use the verify email.html file, which is just a form saying, hey, what's the email address? When they hit the submit button, it's again going to be at slash verify email, but instead of being a get method, it's going to be a post method. So 
it's going to run the other, you know, the handler that we have set up for post requests at that path, which is the verify email post handler. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use the post form method to get our form value. And then our verifier that we had returned earlier, well, we're going to use the verify method. It takes our uh, email address. Uh, if we get an error, we'll go ahead and handle that error, send them back. Uh, otherwise, we'll, do, we'll get our result. And uh, this is just something to make it a little bit easier to see in the printout if you wanted to see it for demonstration's sake. So um, this was the result that was uh, returned, but uh, putting on different lines is just a little bit easier to see in our last one. What our email address was, was it reachable or syntax? You know, we have an avatar to a suggestion or any of this business down there. Uh, anyway, first thing we're looking for is we're checking to see what the syntax was on this result that we returned. So uh, if it was, if it's valid and true, then this would be false and this would not run and we'd continue down the line. Uh, but say if there is a syntax error, well, this is gonna go ahead and run and it's gonna say, hey, uh, email, uh, we're gonna go ahead and send them back with a you know, status bad request, uh, ver you know, send them back to the same page and hand them a message saying email address syntax is invalid. So if there is, if a message does exist, well, then we're going to go ahead and run this part here and we're just going to go ahead and pass in our message. Now let's say if the field, uh, disposable, if this is true, we're going to go ahead and run this part here. Uh, if you want to accept disposable email addresses, that's your call. But if you don't want to, you can set up code like this as well. And we're just going to go ahead and again, use the HTML method, uh, pass in stat, uh, status bad request, you know, we're going to be using the verify email template and for our message it's sorry we do not accept disposable email addresses let's say um, we have suggestion turned on uh, well let's go ahead and take a look at that okay so this one has to be enabled let's turn that back into our verifier variable so if you do not have this on well, it's not going to return suggestions for domain names. Let's say we, we have it turned on as we do. Um, if, if it doesn't have a suggestion, it's just going to be empty. But if it does have one, well, and this is not empty, well, then we want to go ahead and let them know. Again, status bad request, send them back to our first uh, template and for a message. We're going to pass in email address is not reachable looking for whatever that is. We're just concatenating this all together. Um, is it this other one instead? But let's say that one doesn't trigger. Let's say on our result, if it is no. Now this one, you can have uh, three different results for reachable. It could be yes, no, or unknown. Uh, but this one, since we're only checking for no, if it's yes or unknown, we're letting it pass through. Um, you could say, unless you get a yes, you know, not letting it through. But if it's definitive no, then you could say, yeah, you want to make sure, like, hey, we need a different email address. Or you need to check the one that you gave us. So again, we'll send them back and let them know email address was not reachable. Uh, you know, has an MX record. Uh, they should have that set up if they're going to be receiving email. So this is just to let you know if they're, their email address is properly, uh, their domain is properly set up with a DNS system for receiving emails. Again, uh, if it's not set up, we're just going to go ahead and let them know, Hey, domain entered, not properly set up to receive emails, MX records, not found, but let's say everything, uh, does run correctly. Actually register them. We that before. There. Then we'd go ahead and uh, register the user and then say, uh, send it to the result page saying, hey, um, email address uh, such and such has been, has been registered. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our code for setup. So like I said, um, for the suggestion, we, go ahead, we have to go ahead and enable that. There's a couple of those that you have to enable. They might have off by default. Uh, for our disposable domains. Now we actually have to pass in what 
domains, we say, hey, are the disposable ones. And you can get a list of these online should you're interested in using this. So this one, we just passed in one domain and that's why that disposable email main, you know, is registered with our verifier. I believe that it's just put into a map and it checks that map for those disposable uh, dom e email address uh, domains. Now, one thing to be aware of is the SMTP check is disabled by default. So if we take a look at that real quick, the, uh, the SMTP check will give us useful information such as if the host exists, if their inbox is full, whether it's deliverable or whether the account's been disabled. So, and the reason that they do this is to prevent spam. Most ISPs, say if you're just running this on your code and your ISP at your house, well, uh, they're going to disable port 25. They don't want you running an email service from your home. But say, for instance, put this on Linode or you know, Amazon or somewhere. Well, yeah, they're either going to have port 25 open or just allow you to open port 25. Um, just something to be aware of. So if I run it here uh, now, it's going to fail. But if I was to run it, um, say on Linode or something, you know, we could be just fine as long as that port is open. So, anyway, uh, again, this can be really helpful to keep uh, making sure you don't have a bunch of fake accounts or if the information is entered incorrectly, that you don't lose a user who's just getting frustrated because of their own mistakes. You can help them out and say, hey, maybe it was this, maybe it was that, before you go off and send that verification email to see if they actually own that email address. Uh, anyway, uh, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out and every little bit is appreciated. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.